ductily checked the coast was clear and then leapt out of his window, flying to the roof across the road. Now you might think that even Londoners would notice a four metre long, green bellied, red backed, urban based mountain dragon leaping overhead. There were two factors that helped Dirk remain unseen. Now, firstly, he was able to blend. Blending is the ability mountain dragons have to camouflage themselves with the surface they're sitting on when they're saying absolutely still. Secondly, as any self-respecting dragon expert knows, dragons cast shadows upwards. He leapt towards the school, running across a rower's houses, leapfrogging over chimneys, somersaulting across busy roads, spreading his wings enough to allow him to glide but ever ready to stop dead and blend with the rooftop if somebody did happen to spot him. He had come to love the rooftops of London. He was rarely happier than when he was leaping onto a roof, spinning around a flagpole or soaring over a busy high street. He spotted a group of workmen climbing around a building covered in scaffolding, shouting to each other with their hairy bottoms hanging out of the backs of their trousers. Dirk took a longer route to avoid being spotted. By the time he got to the school, all the students had left, but there were two cars remaining in the car park. Dirk jumped down to a storage unit and turned the same shade of flaky dark green paint. Two men stepped into the car park. The first was a young man, prematurely balding and wearing a blue overall. The second had a big, round, red-cheeked face, neat dark brown hair and an expensive suit. Well, Mr Vese, is everything locked up? said the man, who Dirk took to be the deputy head. Yes, sir, Mr Barnes, all safe and secure, replied the caretaker. If it was safe and secure, we wouldn't have these thefts. Well, no, sir, replied Mr Vese. You've got a young son about reading age, haven't you, Jim? said Mr Barnes. Yes, sir, replied the caretaker. And your wife? She doesn't work, does she? I imagine it'd be hard to make ends meet. Are you implying that I'm taking those books? demanded Mr Rees angrily. I'm not implying, I'm insinuating, said Mr Barnes. It seems to me you'd stand to gain more, said Mr Rees angrily. If we fail this next inspection, the governors will get rid of the head. Then I reckon you'll be up for the job next. How dare you, shouted the deputy head. Well, you watch who you start accusing next time, replied the caretaker. Good night, sir. The two men got into their cars, slammed the doors and drove away. Dirk jumped up to the roof above the library and looked around. That's odd, he spotted, noticing there were a few corks dotted around. He picked one up and tucked it into the fold of skin behind his wing. He flew down to the gym, found a spot where he had a good view of the library window and blended with the rooftop. Now, a lot of people think that detective work is all about car chases and brilliant deductions. It's not. As Dirk Dilly knew too well, real detective work is 99.9% about watching nothing happen slowly. One of the knacks of being a good detective is being able to occupy your time while you're waiting for nothing to stop happening and for something to happen. Dirk filled his time by thinking about the idea of schools. Dragons didn't have anything like it. A young dragon learnt what they could from their mother before they got abandoned and left to figure out stuff on their own. Dragons didn't have communities in the same way as humans. Dirk wondered what it would have been like to go to school, not just to learn stuff, but to have formed friendships, to have made enemies, to have had a sense of belonging, to feel a part of something. It was somewhere that humans went to learn how to interact. It was where good things and bad things happened for the first time. Dirk supposed it was something that made humans who they were. And then his thoughts were interrupted by a movement around the library window. Dirk's yellow eyes widened as he saw the book thief. And that's part two. So uh, if you can continue trying to work out, uh, uh, well, we know what the mystery is now, uh, but who our suspects are, what our motives might be, uh, and uh, who do we think is going to do it when we find uh, the concluding part of uh, this uh, dragon detective, the case of the missing books. Mugs run by a dragon or Dirk Dilly. You can call him any time, but don't call him silly. He lives in London in an upstairs flat with a landlady who is as blind as a bat. <laughs>